Oh my gosh, yes. I, when I read this, I, my mind exploded. Purple smoke went flying out of my head. The crazy futuristic tire envisions a radical new way to replace your rubber. Rather than swapping the physical tire for a new one, the tire manufacturer is pondering something else. What if you simply regenerate new tread? So what you know, if you made a tire that grew its own skin? Sorry, I have to share a quick story. So I share a story in uh, one of our classes that we teach, which is how the consumers hate auto repair. And when they purchase a new vehicle, when they're in the finance department, if they could, you know, let's say that uh, Ford came out, because we're trying to save Ford from like a couple episodes ago. So we're gonna help Ford with this example. If Ford offered you this magical pod that you inserted in the fuel tank at delivery, you would never have to do auto repair. And it's, so the magical pod keeps the car or truck from ever breaking? Yeah, check okay. this out. So the only thing is you've got these pads, you gotta park the car on at night, the tires will magically regenerate, you never have to buy tires again, the brakes will magically regenerate, the fluids will magically regenerate, but you've gotta do it now, because once you drive it off the lot, you can't do that. 100% of consumers would choose to buy this, then go through our process on the repair side of things, right? So this is very interesting that Goodyear's actually developing this, it's, it's fascinating to me. So the, the thing is, is that their concept is, it's a compound that they insert into the center of the tire. Mm -hmm. So the rim and the tire are all kind of one. Right. They insert it and then it pushes the rubber out and right. it grows its own tread. Yeah, so it regenerates. And it's then the idea too in the article too was that it could like do winter and summer. So right. the different inserts yep. or the different gel or rubber gel so you, you put in. you got a track day coming up. You're going to put your racing slicks yeah. in. Yeah, you got winter coming. You're going to do your snow charge without having to go into the shop. It's going to affect alignment sales. It is. Because <clears throat> you just put more of the goo in. You don't align it. So cars are driving down the street all. It depends quicker. on the cost of the goo. Oh, you think the goo might be expensive? The goo could be expensive. So the alignment service can always be a cost benefit and actually save you money. That's very interesting. I wonder when uh, one of the Pretty brake companies are going to come out with regenerative brakes. They already have that. I think that's harder to do than rubber, don't you think? Well, yeah, with a friction material, yes. Yeah. I well, think what it's they'll do cool, is they'll do, they'll do something with magnets or gravitational pull, the earth slowing the vehicle down. What is your style of interviewing? Like, say you're interviewing an advisor. Like, what are there two or three questions that you ask in an interview that you think are magic? Well, Chris, I'd love to give you a great answer. However, with my track record at my shop in three years, going through 18 advisors and 42 technicians, I'd love to learn something today. So go ahead, tell me what I should be asking. Well, I mean, one of the questions I like to ask service advisors is like, Tell me about a difficult customer experience or an unhappy customer and how you turn them around. Okay. Just get out the checkbook and write them a check. What? I'm answering your question. I'm being funny here. Give the farm away? Give the farm away. No, you don't so want that person. What you want is an advisor that answers that question. Well, what I did is I gave away $5,000 to policy or whatever. Oh my gosh. That's way too much money. Now, some people would ask that question a little bit different, okay. and they would say, like, how have you used your sense of humor mm -hmm. or your magic powers, that sort of thing. So, But then would... you're assuming somebody has a sense of humor or magical powers. Right. It's a trick. It is. It's a trick. It is. Well, is the, is the point here, though, to keep them talking and see... The purpose of a job interview is to scare the living crap out of people. Okay. <laughs> Intimidation. Yeah. Oh, got no, it. No, I'm joking. Okay. No, but the, the purpose is it, to understand what their system is or their style, right? One question I like to ask advisors too is like, what, when you're walking up to a customer that's at their car, so you're approaching a customer at their car, you're going to ride them up, you're going to help them, what are you thinking? Should we do role play for the uh, audience now? Pretend that you're the service manager, I'm the service That's advisor. That's too kinky, let's not do that. But what what would you wanna hear from an advisor? Well, one of the things that I would want to hear is what are they gonna look for to connect with the customer? How can yeah. they help the customer, right? Yeah. The personal clues. Now, what if they say, what I'm thinking what I'm gonna sell them? Oh, wrong mindset. Yeah. How much are spiffs? Sales are easy. The sales come if you connect. Absolutely. Right? right? Yeah, for sure. I want somebody who's in the in the spirit of connecting, helping, taking care of. 
the money takes care of itself. Absolutely. Go to relationship, not transaction. So Elon Musk has a question that he asks in every interview when he's um, talking to candidates. And it's one simple, important question. Tell me about some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. That's a great question. It's kind of in line with this, with our style, right? Yes. Like, and you can frame give that me ex an example and how did you fix it? That's really good. I also like for advisors, uh, give me one of the hardest sales objections you've ever had to overcome and how did you overcome yeah. it? Yeah. So Absolutely. what did we learn here? We learned that they, your answers in hiring the right people lie in the question that you ask. Maybe, maybe that's what we learned, but could it be possible? Be intimidating? <laughs> well, yeah, I shared that. <laughs> Is it possible that we're uh, more like Elon Musk than we think? I would, yeah, absolutely. Is that a good or a bad thing, though? It's a great thing. What are That's you kidding? A great thing. What Changing are, the world. Changing what do the we universe. have against Elon Musk? It's kind of a polarizing topic. Really? I believe so, yes. But I mean, just as an individual performing, like... Oh, I mean, Absolutely. Let's go back to his <clears throat> PayPal days with Peter Thiel. Do you ever watch um, any of Peter Thiel's stuff? No. Do you know who Peter Thiel is? Uh, how should I answer this? Honestly? No, I don't. Honestly and quickly? Honestly, no. <laughs> there you go. Done. You don't know who Peter Thiel is? I don't, no. So Peter Thiel and this guy, you might have heard of Elon Musk, started PayPal. Okay. And then Peter was one, when, he, when they sold PayPal... He was one of the first investors in Facebook. Nice. I think he was the first person to give Facebook money. Which was interesting because I saw an interview when they asked him about that and they're like, hey, was it this, was it that? And he's like, no, we tried to start a social media company before and they were just growing really fast. And so like there wasn't a lot right. of thought in it. And he's like, you know, I don't know. Like, was it Mark? Did he have a great pitch? He was like, no, they yeah. just needed money for more servers because they were adding like 20 schools a month. And right. I thought maybe there's something. Let's give them half a million bucks or whatever. Well, just throw it at the wall and see <laughs> yeah. if it sticks. But um, pretty interesting guy. And his interviews are great. He, he had a lot to do with Trump getting elected. He was a big... I'll give him a high five. He's also that. the guy that, um, that hated Gawker and gave... Hulk Hogan the money to sue Gawker, which ended wow. up putting Gawker out of, out of business. Wow. He's that guy. He's. I have some homework to do. So he funded, do you know that story? He funded yeah. Hulk Hogan. You're asking me all these tough questions today, Chris. Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm watching different stuff on YouTube than you are. <clears throat> yes, You're watching that... like how to replace an AC compressor and I'm watching Peter Thiel. Well, I know, I know how to do that. And then what are you watching? How to increase my fourth labor line. No, nobody but us is putting stuff out like that. Thank you so much for watching this clip of Service Drive Revolution. Now you can catch the full episode on YouTube, iTunes, or Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcast. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new episodes. I'm Chris Collins, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Chris Bulldog Collins. And I'll see you again on the next episode.